Hey guys, so welcome your resident computer came in here in today's episode uh, this 1980s vintage Bulgarian manufactured electrocardiograph I got it on the flea market for 12 uh, Bulgarian leva uh, which is uh, like 8 US dollars no electrodes included unfortunately but how hard can it be to simulate them a little prehistory on the topic. In the 80s, uh, Bulgaria manufactured a lot of computers according to an agreement within the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance and in its peak uh, it manufactured around 40% of all computers in the Eastern Bloc. After the fall of the communist regime and moving from a plant to market economy, the Bulgaria computer industry almost completely perished. Uh, we will have a lot of time to discuss the locally made computers when I get to the Private 8 and Private 16 teardowns, uh, which are respectively a cloned Apple II and IBM XT or AT, depending on the modification. So bear with me on this. Uh, in the 80s, uh, we were making computers like crazy. And yes, uh, most were reverse engineered copies of uh, Western ones. Still, it is uh, not that easy to reverse engineer a chip and produce it locally. Uh, right about that time this thingy was born, uh, by the looks of it, uh, I was sure it was uh, closely related to the Private 8 uh, Apple II. And it is, uh, but we will determine that later when we take a close look at it. On the front some buttons which I will show you later and on the back uh, CGA and BNC video outputs and a port for the electrodes, a couple of fuses, uh, one for the line and one for the neutral and that's a nice touch, uh, you don't want to electrocute your patients. On the buttons topic, a set cursor button here, uh, right below it up and uh, down buttons and next to them a freeze button and a QPS button uh, that's some ECG specific stuff uh, next to the QPS button alarm buttons you will be able to hear them later I know you're excited and right above all those buttons uh, two knobs and a power LED anyway uh, you know the interesting stuff is inside so let's tear this baby down Four bolts, two by two on any of the sides, and voila, classical 80s inside, a motherboard and a daughterboard design. I don't know if you can see it, but the motherboard actually looks great. I cannot say that about the daughterboard. Many bodges, uh, literally hundreds of them. I really don't like how this thing was put together. Uh, despite that, uh, this uh, design madness, uh, lots of resistors, uh, capacitors, trimmers and old school uh, transistors and uh, this big additional connector. I suppose uh, there is a more advanced version on this uh, with more features uh, because uh, this one only uses 3 pins on the huge back probe connector. The power supply looks great and it's well isolated. I told you, you should not power surge your patients with high voltages. Uh, those 32 years old uh, Bulgarian capacitors, electrolytical, uh, they are made according with the Bulgarian national standard, uh, still looking great, uh, none of that capacitor plug infested rubbish, uh, decent inductor as well, and the connector is the same as on the Private 8 and Private 16, and I am not kidding, on some Soviet Lada automobiles as well. Uh, always be careful around big capacitors uh, like those one, uh, they still might have a charge in them uh, even if the power cord is unplugged, so uh, make sure that they are discharged because they can kill you if they are big enough. Disassemble madness alert, uh, this uh, was uh, really not meant to be easily repaired. Uh, it is even starting to look uh, to me like a prototype. Uh, bolts and nuts everywhere, also the front uh, button switches obstruct the board from getting out. I should remove uh, them first and to do that I need to get rid of uh, the front double wall. 
lots of aluminium used everywhere. It's not funny at all. And I'm about to play some music to you, otherwise you would get bored. Uh, so stay tuned for some free YouTube music. Finally, the motherboard in all its glory, even locally made in the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War, it still uses Western capitalistic off-the-shelf components, and in order for me to show you the layout of the board better, I will now switch from video to a high-resolution image. And the main star of tonight uh, is the Hitachi HD 468BOOP. Uh, fancy name, uh, it's working in our case at 2 MHz and it's a basically a second source of the Motorola 6800. Uh, it was a common requirement for manufacturing companies to require two or more sources for every part uh, in the products uh, they made. This ensured they could get the parts they needed if the supplier had uh, financial problems or in a case of a local disaster. Uh, those are all licensed uh, pin compatible versions and I am not kidding you, uh, you can still get second sources of the Motorola 6800 even today. What else? 8-bit uh, data bus, 16-bit uh, uh, address bus uh, that can address whooping uh, 64 kilobytes of uh, RAM memory, 48 in our case. As I just mentioned, it works with a blazing 2 MHz, which makes it, uh, at least on paper, twice as powerful as an Apple II. Uh, why the Apple connection? Well, the MOS 6502 microprocessor uh, used in the Apple II was designed by people from the same team from Motorola that developed the 6800. At one point they left Motorola and joined MOS technology because of uh, industry layoffs and because uh, some of them uh, did not want to move to Austin, Texas, the new Motorola headquarters. At a later stage, uh, Motorola got angry on MOS for copying the 6800, uh, no matter that it had a different pinout, and they filed a bunch of lawsuits uh, based on violated patents, so they spanked uh, MOS's bottom. Uh, MOS technology was uh, shortly later acquired by Commodore, uh, anyway, it works at 1 MHz in the Apple II, uh, respectively in its uh, Bulgarian copies, the private 82 and 8 series. So, on paper at least, uh, this hard listening machine is twice as powerful. The 6800, or the Hitachi in our case, uh, was often paired, such as here, uh, with the Motorola MC68B21P peripheral interface adapter this fella over here, uh, again in a deep package along with everything else here really. Uh, no worries about the Perry Motorola and Hitachi parts because I told you everything is pin compatible. Uh, the peripheral interface is connected with the micro via a 8-bit uh, bi-directional bus and also provides peripheral connectivity to other devices by two additional 8-bit uh, bi-directional data buses. Uh, they go, as you can imagine, to the peripheral connector at the top of the board. Right between the micro and the peripheral interface controller, uh, there is a Mitsubishi M5L8253P-5. Uh, uh, let the last one close the door, please. Uh, this is a programmable interval timer. Uh, it is used to offload the CPU from loop calculations and functions and there are a lot of uh, whoop calculations and functions in an electrocardiograph. 
ultraviolet light erasable e promo with the system BIOS uh, lies right above the microprocessor along with an empty socket. Uh, maybe additional software for the more advanced uh, model of this thing. Another ultraviolet erasable e promo lies on the far end of the board. I suspect uh, it carries the video BIOS or might be loaded with some more system software. On the other side of the micro, the Hitachi HD 46505SP. Uh, this is a non VGA video controller, 40 pin duo inline package again, uh, working at uh, 2 MHz, uh, just like the micro. Uh, this fella is responsible for the video output, uh, which you can see on the top left of the board, both BNC and a hacked uh, CGA video outputs. On the random access uh, memory side, uh, no boring DRAM here, full on SRAM, uh, two Hitachi HM6264 LP-15 and a 15 stands for 150 milliseconds access time. Uh, in size, in terms of size, uh, 8192 word by 8 bit, a high speed CMOS static RAM as I told you. Two chips plus one more socketed. On later 6800 microprocessor, the SRAM is integrated inside, but here is on additional chips. Having accounted the word size, the word size is different for different architectures. This makes up for a total of 16 kilobytes per chip or 48 kilobytes of RAM in total. Groovy. LCs on the board. Some resistors here in parallel and some op amps uh, between them. Uh, some aluminum and many bypass tantalum electrolytic capacitors. Uh, the only botch on the motherboard is here, in contrast with the botch madness on the peripheral board. Uh, everything else on the board uh, is a standard uh, TTL 7400 logic to glue everything up. Uh, the MCU and peripheral controller are fully TTL compatible. Actually, on uh, theory, guys, uh, you could use a 7400 TTL logic to build everything here, uh, but with that low level of integration, the board will be the size of a small room. Uh, last but not least, I told you about the ladder power connector. Here it is. Overview done. Uh, I'm going to show you a block diagram I made. Uh, and just gonna shut up for like uh, 10 seconds uh, for you to admire it. After that I will reassemble the beast, which will be incredibly hard cause it's a pain in the butt disassembling and assembling this thing. It will take like 15 minutes uh, for me, but because I like you I will spare you the misery and fast forward everything to a matter of 30 seconds.
and the power on sequence is in that order a short tribal dance a count from three to one press a button pray a little and it works and mr caveman would now like to play with the ecg probes but unfortunately i don't have them anyway how hard can it be to emulate them and when i say emulate uh, i will just uh, fiddle a little with the port and yes uh, i would really love to show this cardiogram to a cardio specialist uh, hello mr kevin i just got your results oh i think you're dead and just listen to this alarm sound guys isn't it glorious That is all for this 100 subscribers uh, special celebration video folks, I hope that you like it, if you do please uh, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment here or in my Facebook page, it is uh, still boring there but I am working on it. Uh, if you find what I do here in YouTube interesting uh, you could even subscribe, uh, that way you will be notified when my last uh, 100 subscribers uh, celebration video is ready. Yes, uh, the Russian vintage uh, punk console, I announced uh, that video some uh, time ago, anyway, working like a beast to deliver it soon. Until then, be happy, stay safe, Mr. Caveman over and out.